Doctor slash nurses slash professionals have read it. What is something you saw in the air that made you say, how the hell did that happen? Had a toddler come in for noisy breathing. Wasn't in distress and his numbers were fine, but it was a noise none of us had heard before. X-ray was clear. When doing a throat swab, the other nurse with me saw something shiny way in the back, and we pulled out a long clear straw wrapper. Had another kid come in with a tree branch stuck in his abdomen. The tree branch was so big it had smaller branches still coming out. Had a teenage girl come in, big round belly. Mom said she's pregnant. Kid insists she's not too negative pregnancy tests later she confesses she hasn't pooped in two months. She required two surgeries to clear out all of her stool. How she never ruptured her intestines and gone septic is beyond me. EMT here. I got called to a local limited capability air to transport a patient and a critical care team to a trauma center. I get into the air and head over there to patient. The patient's room is a horrible mess. Dressings everywhere, blood on the ceiling and on the floor. Imagine any scene from any overacted movie where a medical professional yells don't you die on me. Like that. On the bed is lying an older woman with her leg exposed and the doctor is doing some stitches on her shin. No biggie, the kind of thing you'd expect the doctor to spend 5 minutes on deciding if a bandaid was good enough or if it actually needed surgery. It completely failed to line up with the scene around them, like the housekeeping department was on strike or something. Anyways, it turns out that the woman had banged her shin into the steps of a shuttle bus. Her husband then drove her to the air closest to their house, 45 minutes away, bypassing 6 plus different hospitals, including the one we ended up taking her to. Apparently, when she walked into the air she said to the registration nurse I think I'm going to die, and the nurse responded I think you're right. Turns out she was on aspirin, and warfarin, and some form of chemo. She had virtually no clotting factors, and the ones she had left were inhibited. So what for most people would have been an annoying bleed which would have easily been controlled with pressure after a few minutes was a very small, uncontrolled arterial bleed which sprayed asterisk evrywhere asterisk. We got her down to the trauma center without any additional complications, but I have no follow up from there. My wife was a social worker at a dialysis clinic. She came home frazzled early one day. Apparently a regular patient came in and had pulled his pig line out of his neck when he was pulling off his sweater at home. Instead of driving to the air he drove there, the air was across the street. He sprayed blood all over the foyer area. A couple nurses got to him and controlled the bleeding as best they could while my wife called an ambulance. She said that the amount of blood was indescribable. He had parked out front, so they had to move his car, they couldn't drive it, because the amount of blood in it, had to get it towed. She said it looked like a murder scene. We admitted this one woman in her 40s. Started off at home as a pimple on her buttocks. Then it got infected. She was embarrassed by it, so she ignored it. But then it got worse and the worse it got the more embarrassed she got. She presented with a gangrenous butt cheek. We sent her straight to surgery, no idea how much of it was lost. The smell was incredible. Then there's the woman who came in with a metherfican vine growing out of her vagina. She liked solo food play, and her produce of choice were potatoes. A spot had broken off inside her and took root. Potatoes like to grow in moist dark environments, so it literally took root and required surgery to remove. Woman's hand sawed off at the wrist. Clean cut too. Self-induced. Obvious mental issues going on there. I heard she was able to get it sewn back on and regained most of the function back. An 8 foot long splinter of wood that had went through a man's dung and was dangerously close to his femoral artery. He worked in an industrial setting and was cutting plywood and a piece splintered off and shot through him. Amazingly enough it didn't damage his urethra and his jeans he had on encapsulated the tip of the wood, so he had very few fragments to pull out with it. I saw a man being carted out of the ambulance and into the emergency room with both of his eyeballs popped out of his head and resting gently in each of his hands. He was not panicking or sedated just sitting there patiently holding his eyeballs. My ex is a doctor. He said they had a psych patient rip out one of his eyes one day, throw it on the floor, then stomp on it. Mental illness can make people do some terrible things to themselves. Three quick stories as a paramedic. One. Guy wanted to commit suicide so took a bow saw to his neck, google it, that thing has nasty teeth. 
ripped muscle and skin, that you could see the throat and vital arteries etc. Who picks up a bow saw to slice their throat. 2. Guy found by girlfriend with multiple stab wounds and arterial bleeding. They say he was attacked when he answered the door. Was weird due to no defensive wounds etc. Later found out it was weird sex game between the couple that went too far. 3. Person found dead in their house by a person who lives 20 miles away. Cold not remember the exact address and didn't know the person. All at 4 a.m. We think he was a burglar who came across an 8 week corpse. I got an order to do an ray on an ankle at 2 a.m. I roll into the room and the man's foot is on backwards but nothing was broken. All the doctor had to do was pull super hard straight down and it snapped back onto place like a rubber band. The story was he touched a stripper and the bouncer showed him who was boss. I'm still confused on the mechanics of any of this. My dad got his axe tangled in a hammock when we were camping and ended up with it in his leg instead of the wood. Yes, he is aware that he was supposed to check his perimeter. He had initially, but the log had rolled several times and he just got frustrated and moved with it. Went right between the tibia and fibula, chipped one of them, sliced through the artery, ended up having to have vascular surgery to repair the artery, and spent 2.5 months in a cast. Took a very long time for him to regain feeling in the top of his foot. Never actually saw this patient, but a colleague showed me an x-ray of man's rectum that clearly showed a Yankee candle where there should not have been one. My wife is a former EMT, she tells me the worst call she was on was for a guy who had been shot with a .22 during a gas station robbery. The round had bounced around inside his chest rupturing all kinds of stuff. She was pretty experienced by this point and could see the guy was in serious trouble, BP just crashing, so she tells the driver he has to move it or the patient is going to bleed out before they can get to the ER. By the time they get there the blood is sloshing around on the floor of the ambulance and it pours out when they open the door. He did make it. My cousin was a paramedic and told me a story about a lady that stuck a live lobster in her vagina. The lobster apparently freaked out and flinched and uncurled its tail causing it to get stuck in there. Nurse here, when I was a student I had a patient brought in from their care home with maggots in their trach, which is a hole in their neck the patient breathes through. The paramedics said they had suctioned around 100 maggots on the ride over. Next would have to be a woman who gouged out her own eye due to psychosis. She calmly walked into the air and asked if someone was available to clean it for her. Me. Working night shift. In comes a dude with four cops and crap load of restraints. He is naked, bleeding and screaming. Great. Okay so blood work, sedate and figure out what the hell he took. The guy seems okay. Mistakes, as I recall. Dude was not sedated, but playing possum no one thought to do pupil check. Releasing a full arm restraint. Letting a new grad do the draw. Dude shot up, shoved the student nurse, and started throwing shit. As I weighed in, to try to calm him down, mistake, another nurse comes in to do bad cop. This enraged him, and I turned to tell off the new nurse and my back is presented to crazy man. Huge mistake. He picks up his fourth pole and swings it like he's going for a world record and hit me across the back. Heard my ribs crack. I hit the floor, flipping around like a fish out of water trying to breath. The cops come in secured dude and decide to stick him in a 24 hour monitoring. I'm still trying to breathe and cough which hurts a lot. So learned, do not turn your back on anyone. I agree. I'm an EMT and do a lot of psych transports. Been beat up once trying to get a patient onto the gurney. I always do at least two points. I've refused to take patients, even in four points and a spit mask, without sedation. I had a 350 pounds patient come off the gurney and start swinging at my 120 pounds female partner. Pulled her out, locked the door, and called 911. Cop came and tasered him and took him. Homie made a mess of all messes in the patient compartment. I never ever leave anything loose on my person when dealing with any psych patient. I'm not going to risk my safety, my partner's safety, or the patient's safety. If they are too violent and agitated for the crew to be comfortable transporting them, night night bucko, or we refuse a call. Call. Not me, my brother while in med school. Guy walks into emergency room with the handle of a butcher knife sticking out from under one eye. 
They x-ray him, and find that yes, the whole knife is there, sticking into his skull. X-ray and neurological tests indicate that he was really lucky, knife didn't do any serious nerve or brain damage. After some debate, they decided to pull the knife out, but it's really stuck. Eventually they lay the guy on his back, a doc takes off his shoe, climbs up on the gurney, puts his foot on the patient's forehead and heaves the knife out. They put the guy on the wood and the next morning the cops show up to ask him about it. Guy says, never mind, I'll take care of it. Next day while no one is looking, Guy gets up and walks out. For people who didn't show up for their yearbook photo, they substituted the x-ray of the guy with the knife in his head. The degloved penis from a motorcycle accident was quite the surprise. There wasn't a lot of damage around the area other than that, so I wasn't expecting it. That's why you check everywhere though. Edit bonus story, mid-twenties female came in acting psychotic, screaming about the devil, scratching, biting hitting, getting naked, the whole nine yards of crazy. We figured she was on meth or something. Anyway she starts having seizures and some other concerning symptoms, so we get a caught brain. This was when I was introduced to neurosis disacosis or more simply brain worms. Don't eat undercooked pork in Mexico. When they give you the medications to kill the worms, the swelling goes down, but the dead worms stay put. Respiratory therapist here. I worked at her in a city hospital. That was kinda the red-headed stepchild of hospitals in the area, but that's another story. We were a community hospital that did primarily cardiac care, but also had a smaller. We were in the middle of the trauma triangle, meaning three large level 1 trauma centers, so we rarely saw much of anything in our uh, usually glorified primary care and cardiac patients diverted from the other level 1 centers. This was in 2002 or so, and the facility is now closed. While working night shift, we got a call from the fire department saying they were responding to a self-inflicted gunshot. This was an unusual patient for us to get with the nearby trauma centers, but they were all on divert, and we were the closest facility. Being a pretty boring for the most part, all the staff there got a bit excited to finally have a real patient. Fire rolls in with the patient a bit later. Story is this guy calls his friend from a shitbag hotel downtown, says he's gonna shoot himself, and hangs up. Friend calls 911 who respond to the hotel. Patient arrives intubated with CPR in progress, but no visible GS wound anywhere. I'm on the chest doing CPR and my supervisor is bagging the tube. The sub tells the doc that something isn't right with the bagging, he doesn't think the tube is in. Sup pulls out the tube and doc goes to intubate the patient. While trying to insert the et tube, Doc yells loudly what the fuck, and asks for the McGills, a type of forcep used occasionally for intubation procedures, usually with nasal intubation. Doc proceeds to yank out a 12 gas shotgun shell from the patient's trachea. Part is reintubated, the code proceeds, but is called a bit later after standard interventions yield no change. After the code was called, upon closer examination, we noticed the guy's two front teeth were chipped. The coroner concluded that the guy didn't have a shotgun, but had the shell, put the shell in his mouth thinking he could set off the primer with a hard bite. The guy bites, chips his teeth, winces in pain, and inhales the shell into his trachea. Fire doesn't notice the obstruction, and puts the tube in the esophagus. There wasn't a lot of ETCO2 devices, especially in the field, at this point in time, and hauls ass to the air to let us handle it. I've seen some crazy stuff in my 20 years, but this was by far the strangest. Okay, first comment ever. Years ago working as an ed doctor, had a dad bring his 3 year daughter in. They'd been eating pizza and she started choking. He opened her mouth and saw a red lump in the back of her throat, so he stuck his finger in and hoiked it out, followed by some fairly brisk bleeding, which had stopped by the time they came in. He brought this 3 cm diameter piece of meat with him in a handkerchief, but it didn't appear to be from the pizza they were eating. I had a look in this happy little girl's throat without a problem, yep, only one tonsil to be seen, the other was in the hanky, 